Mascar on Premier Sports is brought to you in association with Racequip and Ram Motorsport. Hello and welcome to a rather rainy Knockhill Trioval here in Scotland for the latest action from the Mascar Championship. We're with uh, Jeff Harborn, you're the race director for the, for the Mascars. After last weekend's uh, events, there seems to be a lot of punishments given out. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Well, in the rules, we're not allowed to take cars out of the running. Uh, two drivers as were taken out of the running, which the driver, offended drivers, got punished with dock three places for taking a car out of the running. In theory, they was in a good place and they was took out of that place. So we have to dock them places uh, to make it fair on the driver who was took out right. the best we can. Uh, obviously we don't please everybody but we try to. Now we're here for a tri-oval, slightly different this weekend. Uh, what can we expect round here? Well I'm hoping no more incidents like last week but uh, you know uh, it's new tracks to all the drivers and you know they'll give it their best shot to find the best way round and uh, you know there's uh, the top four are, you know there ain't much between them uh, you know so hopefully they'll all race nice and gently out there and hopefully no more antics. Steve Dakin, number 99. It's been a good season so far for you. What are you expecting here at Knock Hill? Uh, try and finish every race, that'd be a bonus. Um, obviously the weather's going to take a big part in all this. I've just been out had a practice on some slicks. Didn't go very well, so we've just tried, we've changed the tyres. So we'll go out there and we'll have another go and see how it goes. Yeah, now if the weather holds as it is now, it's not, it's not quite full wet, is it? Do you reckon there's going to be an opportunity to put the slicks on later tonight? Uh, looking at the state of the weather, I, don't, I couldn't really tell you, and it's the first time we've been up here, so really I don't really know, so just see how it goes. I understand it's a bit frantic, Steve, you're changing to wets, I take it it's not slicks tonight then? Uh, just a bit too damp, bit of an experiment going on to see which is the best tyre for the race, obviously. Yep. Um, worth the gamble. Second lot of practice, so... Just, um, just a case of give it a try to see what happens. All right, best of luck. Okay, no problem. No problem. Well, let's have a look at the standings coming into uh, this race day. Steve Dakin and Steve Stanford up at the top with a little bit of breathing space over Richie Wilkes in third. Russ Best and uh, a strong performance so far this season from Michael Hart Jones means that he completes the top five, but we've still got plenty to play for going into the remainder of the season. And conditions are certainly going to be tricky here at the uh, Knock Hill Trioval. Very wet conditions, as you can see, as we get ready for heat number one, the 37th race of the season for the Mascars. Paul Bennett in 44, and number 24 of Lawrence Bath on his uh, first run this year will lead them away. Now, this uh, circuit, as you can see, quite different to the other ovals that the Mascar Championship uh, races on, more like uh, a road course than uh, a short oval really you can see it's got so uh, inclines it's got tire walls gravel traps and uh, much more so an interesting challenge for these mascar drivers the pace car is out of the way the race controller talking to the drivers on the race receiver radios they come up towards the green flag and here we go the power comes on from these uh, superbike engine machines and away we go with 44 paul bennett leading into the first turn wet weather specialist julie stanford in the pink 11 car up onto the outside into second Yep, good start from her, taking plenty of speed into turn uh, two. As we go on board with Simon Johnson, you can see just how difficult these conditions are, and he gets a tap from behind, so Simon Johnson spins, does a full 360, finds the engine again and keeps going. So a great recovery there, but that's going to knock him quite a long way down the order. Stanford now is losing out a position to that Dayglow car, which is the 25 machine of Robin Bath. So Robin Bath up into second place, now possibly into the lead, having a little look up the inside. 
of Paul Bennett into turn one. Not close enough this time, but gets a good exit and surely will make the move stick down into turn two. Here we go, looking back on board with Robin Barth. The move is made and Julie Stanford followed through as well. So Robin Bath it is in car 25 who uh, leads the way then, looking for his first ever Mascar win. The man he used to race in a formula called Special Rods down at Mendips Raceway near Bristol. And he's up in front of wet weather specialist Julie Stanford in the 11. Paul Bennett in 44 down in uh, third place. They go up the incline onto the uh, top straights uh, once again. Robin Bath pulling away at the front of the field in 25. There's Wayne Galloway in car 23, the former banger racer, about to lose fourth place to championship leader Steve Dakin in car 99. How far back is Steve Stamford and Richie Wilkes? Looks like Dakin has made the, the best start, really, of all the others, and that's a big, big spin for Hart Jones, just backing into the barrier. In fact, not sure if Michael Hart Jones did hit the barrier, but he's broadside across the track. Simon Johnson dives to the inside to avoid, and as a result, I think makes up a position as well. So, uh, oh no, he's still going to be side by side. Is that uh, Stamford? Yes, it is. The 22 car of Steve Stamford going around the outside of Simon Johnson, who then gets very sideways on the exit curbing. But uh, is that the uh, safety car we've got coming out onto the circuit? It looks as though we might be under yellows here. Yes, that must be for the stranded car of... Uh number 10 Michael Hart Jones so the pace car will pick up race leader Robin Bath let's uh, have a look again at uh, what happened this is early on in the race we see Paul Bennett up at the front I think we're going to see what happened to Simon Johnson here in 69 yes he gets a tap from Michael Hart Jones in number 10 that sent the uh, 69 car around well avoided there by uh, Russ Best and Steve Dakin following behind Russ Best taken to the grass on the inside now we look a little bit uh, further on looks like we're going to see what happened to uh, Michael Hart Jones has not had a good start to his meeting. Yeah, he just went in far too quick, got into the standing water on the outside and round went the 10 car to bring out the caution. Lucky not to take a hefty clout of barrier there, so hopefully that won't have done too much damage to the car. But here is, well, they've, has, uh, I think Michael Hart Jones has been let back through to rejoin the back of the field by the looks of things, and now the uh, course car comes to the front of the field. So it is the 25 car of Robin Bath that is going to lead the way. I presume next time around we will get the restart by the time Michael Hart-Jones has caught up to the back of the order. And we'll get racing back in the way. Julie Stamford still running fairly strongly in second place. This is good news though for Steve Dakin because he now is in third place but right on the back of the lead two as we get ready to go racing again. And that lead two do indeed go well in uh, wet conditions such as this. So expect to see them pull away on the restart from uh, Steve Dakin, the Mascar Championship leader up there in third place, he's pulled clear already of Paul Bennett, who looks to be slowing up there in fourth place, but it's Dakin now onto the tail of Julie Stanford as they drop down onto the bottom straight out of the hairpin, Dakin has a look on the inside, they come into turn number three, they don't want to get into that standing water on the outside, Dakin up the inside, and he's going to take second place as they come out onto the top straight, almost contact there as they come down into the hairpin. Yep, Dakin though looks like he's going to consolidate that position now, no matter how hard Julie Stanford tries, not quite able to keep up. It looks as though Richie Wilkes is possibly up into fourth place at the expense of Wayne Galloway. We'll have a look next time they flash through the shop. Yep, there they go. On board with Simon Johnson now as he climbs the hill. I think that's Steve Stanford to the right of us. Uh, possibly can't quite make out the number as we head down into uh, what is the real radio hairpin on the Knock Hill circuit but it's turn one on this trioval. That is uh, Steve Stanford up in front then as we turn our way into turn two and then climbing the hill once more into turn three and back out onto the start straight. There is Richie Wilkes then up into fourth place ahead of Wayne Galloway who is soon going to be coming under pressure from Steve Stanford and uh, then Simon Johnson and then Russ Best. Oh, Simon Johnson very sideways, just holds it. It's only when you look from this uh, onboard view you can see just how steep this uh, circuit is with all the uh, altitude changes. You go back onto the top straight again with Simon Johnson who's struggling slightly in these wet conditions but Richie Wilkes certainly isn't in car 01. He's up the inside now of Julie Stanford and up into third position but quite a gap ahead to our two leaders Robin Bath and Steve Dakin. Now will Steve Dakin be able to close in on Robin Bath who is in his uh, rookie season, Robin Bath? This is his first year racing in Mascar. There is Richie Wilkes then, third place. Fourth place for Julie Stamford. As she comes down into turn two, then up through turn three. It doesn't look as though she's going to be coming under too much pressure. Richie Wilkes then in the 0-1 car, reigning champion, of course. He's uh, looking fairly comfortable in that third place. I don't think he's going to have the pace. We're on board with Simon Johnson. Is that Russ Best coming up the inside? No, it's the 25 car, isn't it, of Robin Bath, I think. Uh, 
No, it must be Russ Best. Or is that Robin Barth coming through to lap him? There we go. Figured it out finally. Simon Johnson no, getting lapped. Simon Johnson, he said he was struggling slightly in these wet conditions. The British champion, of course, won that title at uh, Stegness at the last meeting, but he's a lap down now to Robin Bath. And look at the lead, he's got now almost the length of the top straight ahead of uh, Steve Dakin. This is mightily impressive stuff from uh, the former Mendips Raceway driver, and he's looking good for his first ever NASCAR win. Climbing up through Turn 4, he is now going to Turn 3, I should say. He is now closing in on the back of Russ Best. To Turn 1, they come again. And uh, getting out of the way on the inside is the uh, 28 car there. Uh, was that uh, yeah, Nathan Bath in the 28 car? He is up all sorts of traffic now, still trying to get around Russ Best, but this is a very impressive performance uh, from Robin Bath at the moment. He's lapped the other two members of his family, Nathan and uh, Lawrence. He's now going to lap uh, Russ Best, the former NASCAR Series champion in car 75. We saw him take a win recently at uh, Northampton, but Best gets uh, very sideways there on the outside as Robin Bath comes through. Looking to lap uh, Wayne Galloway as well. The chequered flag comes out. It's a first ever Mascar win. Well done to Robin Bath. So let's have a look at the results. We expected Steve Dakin to close in a bit on Robin Bath, but if anything, Bath pulled away to a dominant victory. Richie Wilkes finished in third place. Julie Stanford held on well to finish in fourth. Steve Stanford possibly a little bit disappointed to finish down in fifth place. Russ Best in sixth with Wayne Galloway in seventh. Michael Hart-Jones finishing down in tenth place after his early spin brought out the caution. So lively stuff in these tricky conditions uh, from these little mass cars then. Robin Bath very quickly coming through to take the lead. There goes Simon Johnson into his spin. Michael Hart-Jones as well. Let's hear from our race winner. Well, Rob, what a fantastic race. It looked a bit hairy out there, though. Uh, visibility was really bad, but yeah, no, I liked it. No, I, I love the wet. That's what I've always liked. So rain dad was on me this morning. So it's all your fault we're soaking wet now? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, obviously, we had a safety car period out there. It, everything bunched up. It, it was obviously quite difficult to even know that the safety car was coming out, wasn't it? Uh, yes. Uh, if I had been told in my earpiece that it was coming out, then yeah, it would have been difficult to, to know what was going on. I, I couldn't see flags. I couldn't see other drivers, really. Um, just trying to look in my mirror to see, see if there's anybody else coming. And yeah, just drive the best I can, really. So, yeah. Well, we were Simon Johnson, number 69. Simon, it looked a little bit exciting out there. Yeah, it was very, very slippery. Uh, we, was, we got the car handled a little bit better than it was in practice, because I don't know whether you saw practice, but I ended up in the kitty litter. That was a first for the mass cars up here. Uh, so it went a little bit better that time. We've made a few more little modifications, so hopefully it'll be a little bit better in the next one. But I still had many, plenty of spins and, and managed to get everything back on the track again. But So the good the in-car camera will be plenty of extra track action in, onto yeah. the grass. And if we can see through the rain. Yeah. If you can see through the rain because I couldn't it was it, it was terrible to see it really was even with my glasses on and my visor up visor down and all that so it, it, it didn't seem to make a lot of difference but we got there in the end all right well best of luck for the next race anyway thank you very much thank you so the rain not letting up at all and as we get ready for the second heat here at the knock hill trial oval already the cars forming up behind the pace car it's the Bath family that lead them away this time Nathan Bath in 28 and Lawrence Bath in uh, 24 on the front row of the grid our heat one winner robin bath starting at the back and we heard uh, simon johnson mention there in his interview this is the only uh, oval circuit in britain to feature a gravel trap and he was the first to find it in uh, practice earlier on hoping for better fortunes this time he spun again of course in heat one but it's nathan and uh, lawrence bath on the front row the cars forming up two by two as the pace car brings them round the uh, race controller jeff harborn talking to the drivers on their race receiver radios Holding it at the moment in their 2x2 two two formation. The power about to be unleashed for this Mascar heat at number two. And away they go. And it's a good start by Michael Hart-Jones in car number 10. Having a look up on the inside. He's going to go from third to first. It's three wide into the first turn. And Michael Hart-Jones has held it on the inside. Great move by the 10 car. And he's up into the lead. Nathan Barth, despite getting whacked from both sides, holds on to second place. And then I think it's uh, Simon Johnson forcing his way through in third. We go on board with Simon Johnson looking to the outside line. Gets it all sideways but keeps it together nicely. Is he going to slide into second? Yes, he is. Then it's the 22 car of Steve Stamford coming to third place. 24 is Lawrence Bath trying to get past Nathan Bath, but Russ Best dives to the inside line. Look at this. It's three abreast going into uh, turn two. And it looks as though Nathan Bath is still holding on on the inside line as the rest of them fight it out, sliding out of the corner. Comes Lawrence Bath as he makes his way into the left hand at Robin Bath in there as well. 
And there is Steve Dakin, so him and uh, Richie Wilkes not making as good progress up the order as Steve Stanford early on. The prime mover in that uh, little shuffle coming down the bottom straight last time around was Russ Best in car 75. He got up the inside of uh, three or four cars, followed by Robin Bath in car 25. He said earlier on how much he uh, likes the wet conditions. 99 Steve Dakin there running wide as 22 Steve Stanford gets past Simon Johnson who we ride on board with through the rain here at the Knock Hill Trioval. Steve Stanford a much better run for him this time. Simon Johnson having a look on the inside as they go down into the hairpin once again. It's still Michael Hart Jones following that brilliant move on the uh, very first turn of the race who holds the lead. Robin Bath is now on Simon Johnson's tail. They get it sideways coming out of the turn. Behind them is Russ Best, Richard Wilkes and Steve Dakin in 99. So, can Robin Barth find a way past Simon Johnson? It looks like he can, just as I was saying that. He gets alongside into turn one and makes the move stick into turn two, carrying huge speed through there in these wet conditions. It's fantastic to watch as Simon Johnson crests the hill, comes across the start line once again. And now, here's the move being made by Richie Wilkes at the inside of Russ Best, him and Steve Dakin still languishing a little bit further down the order as we go on board with Simon Johnson. He climbs the hill now, there is Robin Barth up in front of us battling with Steve Stamford. Is Barth going to get onto the inside line? Yes he is. Is he going to make the move into turn one? He's going to lean on him as they come up to lap Nathan Barth. We go on board with Stamford. Barth covers the in Nathan Barth, I should say, covers the inside line so Robin Barth couldn't get there. But Nathan Barth is still hanging on on the inside line so at the back marker playing a little bit of uh, trouble here. And Steve Stanford, though, makes it through. That has allowed Richie Wilkes and Steve Dakin right into the mix. But, of course, all this scrapping for the uh, minor placings is allowing Michael Hart-Jones in car number 10 to extend his lead as the conditions get uh, ever wetter here at Knock Hill. Robin Bath now up the inside. That car's so much quicker in these wet conditions. He just dives straight through past uh, Steve Stanford in car number 22. And I think that's now Robin Bath up in the second place from the back of the grid but he's got a long way to go to catch our uh, clear race leader Michael Hart Jones Stamford still third Steve Stamford that is ahead of Richard Wilkes the former Legends Cars racer as indeed is the man side by side with him now Steve Dakin who moves up on the inside and into fourth place Richie Wilkes trying to hang it out around the outside but not really able to do so here is that uh, continuing battle now into turn two up into turn three look how quickly Robin Barth has scampered away from this battling trio you can see Barth just disappearing out of shot there to the right and oh a tap there perhaps I don't know Steve Dakin gets out of shape on the entry to the corner is that going to allow Richie Wilkes the overlap into turn two no it's not so very interesting to see these three battling the top three in the championship really all together on the racetrack which is what we like to see is Dakin going to have a look up the inside of Stanford into turn one he is once again he gets sideways so close to connecting with the back of Stanford's car and again that allows Richie Wilkes to challenge going into turn two so uh, this uh, top three seem to be repeating themselves over and over again are we going to see Dakin up the inside yes we are so Dakin finally makes it through into that uh, third position now and they've got a back marker in their way these three big guns Lawrence Bath being lapped in the uh, 24 car Dakin staying ahead of uh, Steve Stanford in the 22 Richard Wilkes in 0-1 not so far away either they're currently scrapping over third place Robin Bath has escaped into second and he's trying to hunt down our race leader Michael Hart Jones who's led all the way from uh, lap number one Dakin almost uh, out onto the grass there coming out of the uh, hairpin you say Jack Taylor's turn as it's known from the uh, wrong way it used to be now known as Real Radio after it's a sponsor of course we go back on board with uh, Simon Johnson onto the outside of uh, Lawrence Bath as they come up onto the top straight once again and Richard Wilkes now really putting Steve Stanford under pressure he's having a look on the inside as they go down into the second turn this is where Wilkes' car is stronger he's up the inside and he's through into fourth place so Stanford after his strong early start is dropping back a little bit unfortunately for him Richie Wilkes will be pleased to uh, see that now can he begin to close in on Steve Dakin we go on board with Stamford there is Wilkes up in front of us and uh, is that uh, back marker of Russ Best I think possibly moving out of the way but here are our two race leaders then it's the uh, pale blue 10 car of Michael Hart Jones ahead of the 25 car behind him of Robin Bath Bath has done an excellent job of closing in on the back but there is the checker flag and it's not quite enough for Robin Bath Michael Hart Jones takes the win in heat two but a fantastic pace it has to be said 
from Robin Barth, who uh, set a best lap time some six tenths of a second quicker than Michael Hart Jones, our eventual race winner. So Michael Hart Jones gets his second ever win in uh, Mascar Racing. Then Robin Bath second from the back of the grid. Then Steve Dakin fighting off Richard Wilkes and Steve Stanford, a fine battle for third. Simon Johnson came in sixth ahead of Julie Stanford, who had a quiet race. Paul Bennett, Nathan and Lawrence Bath completing the top ten. So it was a great start from Michael Hart Jones, really, that gave him the advantage. But once the battle for uh, second place had been sorted out in the way of Robin Barr, he tried to catch down Michael Hart Jones, but he couldn't manage it. So we're with the winner of race uh, heat two, Michael Hart Jones. Fantastic race for you, led from the start to the finish. Yeah, um, I had the jump out of the, out of the, off the start line. Uh, you know, it, it went well. I could see Robin gaining. I thought, oh. I held my tight line and got away with it. But uh, if it wasn't for Adam, uh, making a couple of adjustments on the car, you know, made it go much better for me. So I wasn't spinning all the time. So Adam's your mechanic who's hiding off camera, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. He's been helping me out. When my dad's not around, fair play, Adam always helps me out. So thanks to Adam. Still the rain continues to pour here at Knock Hill as we get ready for the final for the Mascars. 20 laps again the distance and it's uh, Lawrence Bath and Paul Bennett on the uh, front row this time. The top scorers from the heats of course start further back on the grid this time. Robin Bath again has to do things the hard way from the rear of the grid. It's Lawrence Bath and Paul Bennett, the lower scorers from the heats who uh, lead them away. Russ Best in there on the second row, he's not had a great uh, day so far as the light begins to fade here at the Knock Hill Trio. Oh, we are ready to go racing for a third time with these mascars waiting to be unleashed by the race controller. Nice and steady as they come onto the top straights, the green flag is waved and here we go. And it's a good start by Paul Bennett in car 44, he takes the lead, a slow get away from Lawrence Bath. And look at Simon Johnson in car 69, a much better start this time from him. He's up in a second place on the outside, three wide down the bottom straight, Richard Wilkes, the big winner there up the inside in car 01 as they come round to complete lap number one with Paul Bennett in the lead. So we're on board with Steve Stamford then, so there is Paul Bennett, Simon Johnson, then third place is going to be Michael Hart Jones, is it? No, not able to get past Russ Best, but that's Steve Dakin spinning into the gravel. Steve Dakin loses it at turn one, gets back going again, which is good news. We won't have a caution then, but he's going to be a long way back down the order and he's going to have a lot of ground to make up. Up into uh, third position then has gone Michael Hart Jones ahead of Russ Best as they make their way down into turn one, but Dakin is going to be frustrated with that. There is Robin Barth then already making his way up the order strongly as well, but he's got Richie Wilkes right behind him as they make their way into turn two and then up into turn three. That was a rare mistake there from the master of mascars, Steve Dakin. Not too often we see him spin out, so that tells you how wet it is out there. Robin Bath, meantime, we go on board with making a move on Michael Hart Jones, trying to make it up into third place. Such a great start for Robin Bath from the back of the grid, clearly loving these wet conditions. He's ahead of Hart Jones now and chasing after Simon Johnson in 69 per second. There is Richard Wilkes in the... Uh, 0-1, the Pennzoil uh, look-alike car, the livery formerly used by Kevin Harvick in uh, NASCAR, as 69 Simon Johnson got wide onto the grass there, going down the bottom straight, lucky not to spin out, and that's let Robin Bath in 25 already through into second place. So, across the line they come, Bath followed by Johnson, followed by Michael Hart-Jones, is Hart-Jones able to find room on the inside line? Yes he is, he's going to dive through, is Richie Wilkes going to follow into turn two? He's going to try and he's going to succeed. So two positions lost in two corners there for Simon Johnson as they come across the line and uh, down into turn one. Late look up the inside from Richie Wilkes. Not close enough to get past Michael Hart Jones. How is Steve Dakin doing in his climb back up the order, I wonder? Here's a replay. Is that going to be of uh, Dakin's incident? Yeah, he just loses it on the brakes, doesn't he? And heads towards the gravel trap. Yeah, I think he got on the brakes a little bit too, too rapidly there for turn one and that's a rare spin for the 99 car meantime our leader is uh, being caught there is Dakin on his recovery drive in uh, car 99 and the quicker runners going through the pack are now catching uh, Paul Bennett in the 44 car for the lead there goes Richie Wilkes in the uh, race quick sponsored car chasing after Michael Hart Jones in uh, car number 10 we look now uh, for our leaders it looks to me as though uh, Robin Bath has uh, taken over now at the front of the field, we look back at Hart Jones, he's still uh, th he's still third, yes there's Paul Bennett down in second, so Robin Bath 
your new leader in car 25 looking for his second win of the uh, meeting and his second ever mascar win as well how far down the order will paul bennett fall before the end of this one then he's currently in second place he's got michael hart jones you can see there in the pale blue number 10 car bearing down on him into turn one and then once hart jones gets through there's richie wilkes and steve stanford also just waiting to take opportunity if any arises Michael Hart Jones climbing the hill up into turn three and then out onto the start straight again. Look how much momentum he has carried through there. He looks up to the inside line. Later on the brakes, the Paul Bennett and moves up into second place, but surely too far back to catch Robin Bath now as Richie Wilkes is going to follow through on the inside of Bennett. And he makes it stick and it's not going to be long before Steve Dakin comes through as well. So uh, Dakin, despite his spin, running very strongly indeed. Indeed, a great recovery from uh, Steve Dakin. He's already back up into uh, fourth place fighting the car slightly there going down into the hairpin paul bennett struggling slightly after his strong early pace he's down to fifth but there's no stopping robin bath in car 25 who's well out in front of this one they lap put lawrence bath there in the yellow 24 car and richie wilkes trying his hardest to close in on uh, former autograss racer michael hart jones in car number 10 so he'll be used to uh, slippery surfaces 99 steve dakin former legends cars national champion won that title at Hensford a few years ago before switching to Mascar Richie Wilkes an ex-Legends uh, racer as well and he is still fending off Steve Dakin but here comes Russ Best about to uh, get a lap put on him by Michael Hart Jones Best goes very wide in order to let the other leaders through I say leaders it's of course second third and fourth because our leader Robin Bath is a long long way up the road an absolutely commanding performance you can just see him there flashing up into turn two in the day glow car which is very useful in these conditions because it's getting pretty dark here at knock hill there is the 25 car of robin bath very impressive day of racing he has had he puts a lap on the 24 car of lawrence bath and up into turn three for the final time comes the 25 car of robin bath to take the checker flag and to complete a victory in the final after winning his heat earlier on. It's going to be close for second place, but it is just going to be Michael Hart Jones to take it. Very close for third as well. Steve Dakin and Richie Wilkes coming across the line in that order. Let's check out the uh, replay then of the uh, last turn. Steve Dakin having a go at Richie Wilkes trying to take third place away. Great recovery after his spin. He lunges in. Wilkes got a bit sideways on the outside and Steve Dakin just getting through to take third place away from Richie Wilkes. We'll check out the uh, full results of that Mascars final lap. A heat and final double for Robin Bath. Michael Hart-Jones, great day for him with a win in a second place. Steve Dakin, Richard Wilkes and Simon Johnson coming through in the end to take uh, fifth place. Slightly quiet run by Steve Stanford down in sixth ahead of Russ Best. Early leader Paul Bennett in eighth and Lawrence Bath, the only other finisher in ninth place. So a good early start from Paul Bennett saw him pull away as the rest of the field had problems. Steve Dakin ending up in the gravel. But in the end, Robin Barth came through to take the victory. And let's hear from him. Well, Robin, what a fantastic race. You came through and you just sort of held the lead right through. Yeah, really enjoyed it. Um, good race. Got a good start. Um, come out of the inside of a few, a few of the corners and I think caught some of the faster guys unaware. Just got the legs and got away. So, yeah, not, not bad at all. Yeah, and how was visibility for you? Because obviously once you started catching the back markers, it must have been just throwing up at you like mad. It wasn't too bad catching back markers because they're not kicking up so much spray. It's, initially, it was the first start. It was the uh, follow down in the first corner was the, the <laughs> a lot of spray. But yeah, no, so it, wasn't, it, was, it was bad, but you could just about see where you were going. So. Let's have a look at the points then following that uh, session in Scotland. Steve Dakin still on top ahead of Steve Stamford and Richie Wilkes. Russ Best still in fourth ahead of impressive uh, newcomer this year. Michael Hart-Jones, so no change among the top five in the points. So a great day of racing from the Mascar Championship. Join us next week when we'll have all the action from the Mascar meeting at Cowden Beach. But before then, from everyone here at Premier Sports' coverage of the Mascar Championship, it's bye-bye.
Mascar on Premier Sports is brought to you in association with Racequip and Ram Motorsport.